Hi, it's time for Brain Schwartz, and today I want to show you a simple way to make a rocket stove using a bucket, some PVC, and concrete. I'm also going to tell you why a rocket stove can actually be green. And then, in subsequent videos, I'm going to show you three practical ways that I use my rocket stove around the yard. The big question is, can I get this done before the storm comes? Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's gonna appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. I think it might pass, but let's not waste any time. A rocket stove can be green because of the inherent inefficiency of our energy supply. Our electricity is only about 15% efficient. So much energy is used to make our electricity that only 15% of the potential energy of the fuel actually makes it to our home as electricity. Because a rocket stove uses sticks and twigs, fuel that we don't have to mine, that we don't have to transport, and that's renewable because harvesting this fuel simply requires walking around your yard and finding branches and twigs that have fallen off the tree. They're on the ground because of attrition. In other words, the tree didn't need them anymore for its health, and so it shed them and they can be used as fuel. Even though we're using a resource-intensive product, concrete, to make this rocket stove, it's going to allow us to utilize our own local sustainable fuel and that's what makes it green all right enough philosophy let's get started materials for the job a five gallon bucket a half gallon milk jug three pizza boxes a 12 to 16 inch length of four inch pvc pipe three three inch bolts optional wire armature i'm using chicken wire scrap and an 80 pound bag of crack resistant concrete tools for the job a handsaw a drill with a bit to match your bolts, tape, a large block of wood for a cutting surface, and a straight edge if you don't want to freehand the cuts, a small board or stick, a box knife, wire cutters, a small trowel, and a marking tool. I'm using my twisted sharpie from Greg's Garage. You'll also need a container to mix the concrete. Keep in mind that your bucket is going to be damaged in the process of making the rocket stove, but not so much that it can't be used to make another one. I'm actually using a bucket that I had that had a hole in it already. That's going to be in this space where I'm going to cut out the space for the firebox. But the first step we're going to do is we're going to mark the bottom for drilling holes for our three pot standoffs. So we'll start by marking a four inch circle here in the middle of the bottom of the bucket. It's going to be a general idea of where our hole is going to be inside and then we're going to mark about an inch away from that a third of the way around three holes and then we're going to drill them out all right let's just test to make sure our bolts fit through they do of course these are going to be coming through from the other side so just to check to make sure that they fit all right now we're going to put in our spot for the firebox now what I do with this design is the firebox actually comes out the bottom so that instead of having a tube located about here where the firebox goes in and then up, there's no bottom to the firebox. And that allows us to stack it on bricks or concrete or something to enlarge the firebox however we want to. That's going to allow us to potentially put more fuel in the rocket stove to make it burn hotter if we needed to. We're going to be using a half gallon milk jug to make our firebox. And I like that because it gives us a square profile. It's going to be a little bit easier to get our fuel into the firebox. It's going to give us a little more room. And the straight sides are also going to do well as we use bricks or blocks to make our firebox bigger. Start by tracing the outline of our milk jug on our bucket. And we want to line up the the side, one side with the top rim of the bucket here.
Now we'll use our handsaw to cut out our marking. Then we'll cut across the curve of the bucket to cut the bottom out. Cutting it this way is a whole lot easier than cutting a circle out of the bottom of the bucket here. Now let's just check and see that our milk jug fits. Excellent. Should go in like this and you can see how our firebox is going to be formed. Don't worry about these sections right here just because we're going to line this thing with cardboard before we pour the concrete and tape up any seams so that'll allow us to keep concrete from flowing out. The sun's coming out. I think we're in the clear. So while our milk jug is still in the bucket, I want to mark the length we'll need for our PVC pipe that's going to form the chimney portion of the rocket stove. Just make that mark there and then cut this to length. All right, so let's do a quick test fit. Tube goes in the bottom, and our firebox sits right on top. The way we're gonna make this easy to come out of the form is that we're gonna line our bucket and wrap our firebox and chimney forms with cardboard. The cardboard is gonna provide, you know, an eighth of an inch of space that's going to allow us to very easily slide the whole rocket stove out and to then remove the firebox and PVC once this thing is dried. Let's prep our pizza boxes by cutting off the sides and separating top from bottom. This amount of soil is probably okay. That amount of residue is probably a little too much. Once the pizza boxes are cut, working with the grain, you want to roll them up. We're going to tape it into the bucket. Putting a little outward pressure on the cardboard to keep it against the side. Two pieces doesn't make it all the way around, so I'm going to overlap the pieces of cardboard evenly. Keep in mind that because this bucket has a taper, the cardboard is not going to sit straight on the sides. Now the tape doesn't have to be perfect, but keep in mind that you'll be able to see the edges on the outside of your rocket stove. So the neater it can be, the better. Now one thing that's kind of nice about using this cardboard on the inside is that the little vertical lines that we're seeing in the cardboard are going to become a texture on the outside of the rocket stove, which I think looks kind of nice. Alright, now that our bucket is lined, we're going to trim the cardboard to the top of the bucket and cut out for the firebox opening. Instead of cutting down through the cardboard like this, I'm actually going to work from the inside so I don't undo all my nice taping. So if you slice down from the top till you hit the rim of the bucket, then you can work your box knife through and then just slide it around the lid. Give a little more caution where you're working through two pieces of cardboard. When I get to the firebox opening here, I'm going to stop and work on that. Okay. 
use caution here. This is where slicing your finger becomes a danger. Now we'll wrap our chimney portion and firebox with cardboard as well. But before we do that, we need to fill our milk jug with water. Our PVC is perfectly strong enough to hold back the concrete, but our milk jug would just collapse under the pressure. So let's fill it with some rainwater and then it's gonna be a lot more substantial. One half of the pizza box does a great job wrapping four inches of PVC. We're gonna make sure that the bottom lines up nicely and then tape this in place. Don't forget that our pipe stops right about there. All right, once we got this wrapped, we're gonna press down to find out where the pipe actually stops. And then we're gonna cut there and and cut around half of the cardboard. The firebox is gonna sit right in here like that and these will form the sides of the firebox. Next we'll determine a flat spot that we can use for the casting of our rocket stove. We're gonna leave the bucket in place here until it's cured. We also wanna do this on the grass versus the concrete because we're gonna put our pot standoff bolts down through the holes in the bottom of the bucket into the soil so we can have them sticking out of the top of the rocket stove. I'm gonna mark my bolts about an inch and a quarter from the top and that's how far they're gonna go down through the bottom of the bucket. Now we'll position our chimney down in the center of the bucket. Strive for uniform clearance on all the bolts. Before we put the firebox in, we're going to put in the first bit of concrete because we want to be able to get our armature underneath these panels here. It's just easier to do it um, while we can still have full access to the bottom. Now you can actually skip the armature step if you want to. We're using crack resistant concrete, but I like adding a little bit of substance, some metal into the concrete just to help it hold together. It's gonna make the rocket stove last a lot longer. We do some temporary tape here on the sides of that to hold it out of the way. And we want our armature to be about the middle of where our concrete's gonna be. Not on the edge, not too close to the center. So once we get that, that distance figured out, then we can fold it over itself, lock it in place. These are sharp, be careful. You don't have to use chicken wire if you don't have it. You can use some fencing. You could even use some coat hangers that you would bend into rings and kind of link together. So that's perfect. This is going to sit down right outside the bolts. And we're basically going to add concrete up to the armature. I'm not mixing a lot of concrete. I only want to do what I need to cover that bit of armature. All right, this is a good consistency here. Now a garden trowel would be an ideal tool here, but I couldn't find one. So I'm using this play shovel. And the reason being is I want to just gently spoon this stuff in around the edges.
What I'm going to do now is tamp it down to make sure that I'm on both sides of my armature and that any pockets of air are worked out of the concrete. Use caution here not to push on those bolts. And also don't let your chimney portion ride up. I'm gonna make sure there's no concrete coming underneath the bottom. It is okay if you see a little bit of water coming underneath the pipe. That's normal. All right, once that's done, let's quickly make another piece of armature and mix up another batch of concrete. And we wanna do this quickly so that our top layer doesn't set up too fast. We want the layers to be able to bind together into one piece. So we've got about five minutes or so to make that happen. And since I cut this a little bit short, I can actually just work it down into the concrete. Put a little more concrete over that, mix up another batch. The tamping also helps get bubbles of air to the top. Another layer of armature. Work that down in. This one I can twist. And since I'm coming up to the layer here where our firebox is gonna go in, I'm gonna bend down the front here of those two so that I'm not intruding into that space there where our firebox is going to go. As we reach the layer of where our firebox is going to go in, we got to do a little treating of the concrete before we cover it with the firebox. That's going to prevent it from squeezing out the sides here. We're going to remove our tape and push back the sides here. Before we put the firebox in, I'm actually going to sit in another pizza top here like this and then take our milk jug and slide it in place making sure that it's seated down on the top of the PVC pipe. I'm going to take a little bit of our concrete here and push it into that gap on both sides. You can also use a folded over side into two layers to shim up the back. And now finish off with concrete. We're also going to add in our last layer of armature. We're going to want this at least half an inch below the top of the concrete. Got a storm threatening again, but we're almost done. It's the thing about July in Georgia, you can count on a couple of thunderstorms a day. Make sure we get good concrete coverage in this front corner on both sides because that's going to be the weak spot in this structure. I'm 
I will say, it would have been nice to have the garden trowel, but this play shovel has done a pretty good job. If you only do the armature in one spot, do it on this last layer um, where the firebox is because that is the weakest spot. We don't have that full circle and these spots are most likely to crack off. So if you have to do armature uh, in one place, just to keep it simple, do it in this layer. I'm going to just make sure my top layer is nice and smooth. And now we wait. We're going to let this cure according to the length of time specified on the bag of concrete. And because I've got rain coming, I'm going to go ahead and cover this with a piece of plastic to keep it from getting wet. All right, so it's a couple days later and I've got a fresh shave and a fresh shirt, same hat. Let's take our rocket stove out of the bucket. So we did actually get some rain and I was glad that I had it covered, but I also came out and wet the concrete down a little bit as well because it actually will harden better if it's wet as it cures. So the cure time on this concrete is actually a total of five days. Now it's been two. It's okay for me to get it out of the form now, but I need to wait that full five days, maybe a couple two more than that, just to make sure this is dried and cured before I use it. Now you'll see why using this cardboard and milk jug was a good idea. Now let's turn the bucket on its side slowly and I gotta remember I've got bolts in the ground underneath this so I'm gonna pull it up carefully. See how our bolts did. Looking good. They stayed nice and straight. Now if I shake this a little bit, start to feel it tug out. Of course as the bolts release there, it's a good sign we're moving down. Ready for another rocket stove. Gonna peel back the cardboard, it's done its job well. You can see how the pizza box has left some really nice little vertical markings on the rocket stove. Notice we got a little bit of an overlap here where the concrete has gone underneath our pipe. We have some of that happening on the bottom too. So while this concrete is still a little bit soft before it's fully cured, we need to get in here and scrape that off. And actually, it should flake off pretty easily. We want to uncover all of that cardboard because that's what's going to allow us to pull this out. If you have rough edges like this, you can smooth them a little bit with the, the edge of the board here. But don't erode away too much of the concrete. I'm not going to do too much more to this because I, I don't want to make it worse. You can see some gaps here where I didn't get the concrete tamped down enough as I was pouring it. However, this thing is a thing of beauty even if it's not perfect. Alright, I'm going to carefully lay this on its side and see if we can get the chimney pipe out. This is where having the cardboard between the concrete and the PVC pipe is invaluable. If we just had that pipe in there by itself, there's no way it would have slid out like that. Alright, there you have it. Our concrete rocket stove with our pot standoffs, our firebox, and our chimney. And that's what makes it work. The heat goes in, the convection current pulls the heat up um, and ignites the fire with extra oxygen and it gives us a nice heat to our pot. So I'm going to show you three different things that I use my rocket stove for. One of which will be boiling eggs. I use this cast iron pot and I'll boil eggs once a week which we then use to make deviled eggs, egg salad sandwiches, hard boiled eggs just to eat like that. In next week's video I'm going to show you how I made a burner 
that attaches to the top of this and I use that to burn invasive plants or seeds that are going to be pervasive in my yard. So rather than throwing them away, I certainly don't want to just toss them in the compost pile, they would be pretty voracious there. So they get burned. Then I'll show you how the eggs get cooked. And then the last thing I want to show you is a Japanese wood preservation technique called shashugiban. I'm actually using that on a little office pod I'm making in the backyard here. I've got another channel that's in the works to show that process. So Shoshugiban uses the heat, the fire, to char one side of the wood, thereby preserving it when it's used in building materials. And it also makes this beautiful finish as well. Please let me know in the comments below if you've made this rocket stove, or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them there. As always here at Green Shorts, our mission is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by using your own fuel instead of burning electricity. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.